All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is August 14th, 2024, and I am back for one final, I pray, I believe, one final piece of the puzzle. Now, this piece of the puzzle that we're going to talk about is not new. We've known about it since an incredible revelation in December of 2022. And today, I'm going to bring it back to light. You see, in all of this revelation, we talked about the sun, the moon, the stars, the harvests, the scriptures, the revelation of them, the, the, the history, the jubilees, the count of the, of the Sabbaths, all of these things and more, the birth of Christ, all of it. And I had been declaring that the 8th of Av, that, that I was as certain about the 8th of Av in the Hebrew calendar as I have ever been. I know that it's going to be at the end of the true seventh Sabbath, at the true feast of weeks of the 8th of Av. And I've declared this as much and as certain as I know the revelation of the Gospels in the 14 years. So you can understand my dilemma in this. I, I, I wasn't upset. I wasn't, let's say, overly upset because with everything going on in Israel and with Iran, we know that they are on pins and needles because they know what is coming. There is no there's no peace deal coming from this yet. Iran is going to attack and it is going to be the Isaiah 9 connection which is the light vexation, the the light affliction that is coming on the prophetic type of Ze Zebulun and Naphtali which is prophetically going to be Haifa and Tel Aviv in this attack. The bride will not see this attack. The bride will escape just moments before this attack begins. This Middle East attack will last for about seven days at most before the return of the Lord to begin his 40 days as the Son of Man, as he told us he would in Luke chapter 11, as he said about Jonah. And it will be that about two months after the time of his birthday. But you can imagine, this is obviously a struggle. I, I couldn't understand. If I was as confident in the revelation of the Gospels in 14 years, which have been unequivocally 100% proven in Scripture from the beginning of creation to the end of the book, to the end of the end of days, and so how are the Gospels in the revelation of it. And here I've been declaring that it, at the true Feast of Weeks, at the true end of the 8th of Av, it is absolutely going to be true. I was in a bit of a dilemma. Though I'm still confident, though I've been able to be even keel throughout this whole thing, even though the 8th of Av is passed, it's only been because of Iran and Israel. We know it's coming. But we also know that it will be God's perfect timing. And in this entire story, brothers and sisters, there was an incredible revelation in December of 2022 about the moon. Well, you know what's happened since then, especially in the past year? For some reason, I completely forgot about including the revelation of the moon. It was such a powerful one. I was so excited because I was able to now track how off the moon was in any given year, in any given month, lining it up with the Hebrew calendar. I knew it. But for some reason, it just went off into the wilderness of my mind, only to be brought back <clears throat> late yesterday because I started pondering, Lord, 
I know we're here. How could it be that that the you know, how could the spirit have allowed me? I you know, I know it was me. It could just been my flesh. But I made such a, decla a declaration of the true eighth of Av based on all of the revelation here revealed in the mysteries hidden since the foundation of the earth that we've been given to understand. And I know it's connected to the end of the eighth of Av. So, Lord, what am I missing? How was this possible? And then I was brought back to my memory of the moon connection. Because have you heard me say anything about account for the moon over this past year? It went into the forest of my mind and just disappeared. Well, today we're going to bring that back. We're going to add it into the mix so that we have not only the stars for Taurus, not only where the sun was to begin it in Taurus, but the moon as well. You see what I did? I started basing everything just off the Hebrew calendar, but from a sun count in Taurus. What about the moon? And with this here today, I believe this is the final piece. I believe. This is the final piece. You can all take it for whatever you want to take it. I believe this is the final piece. And in this revelation of the final piece, putting the sun, uh, putting the moon with the sun back into its place as it was in the beginning, as we've done with the sun, so should we do with the moon. That when I did this and when I went through it, I posted about it in the forum late last night and I posted about it in the community page on the YouTube channel here late last night. And then as I studied it and pondered it more, I finally got the clarity I was looking for for something in Zechariah chapter 7 that always kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. I Only in relation to the Feast of Trumpets. Well, what have we understood over this past year? That the Feast of Trumpets is the beginning of the 14 years. Well, guess what? If it's as it was in the beginning, if, if the revelation of the sun being two months off and it gave us the revelation of the sun as it was in creation in Taurus, then we need to account for the moon as well. And what do we know about the Hebrew calendar? Every two to three years, they have to what? Add a 13th month, which is called the second Adar. Do you know what that means? Do you understand what that means? It means that they fall behind every single month and every single year based on the moon, which is why after, say, two years, they add a 29-day month to account for the number of days that it has fallen behind. That's the evidence that they themselves know within their own calendar they are still off. So while I'm declaring the 8th, the 15th, 22nd, and 29th on the Hebrew calendar, it's because on the Hebrew calendar, that's what it really would be. But not according to creation. Not according to where the sun should be moving perfectly as it was in creation. Just as we have revealed with the sun. The moon needs to be understood in its correct place. And in December of 2022, we revealed it. And I could show it in any year. I went a few years back and I went a few years forward or at least a couple years forward. And I showed in account how to understand it. Well, last night, the Spirit brought it back to my memory. And you're going to see as we go a little further towards the end of this, it won't be a really long one. You're going to see this, this thing that was still making me scratch my head in Zechariah 7. Because 
if the end of days now being known and understood as we have, that it will begin at the true feast of trumpets, then how is the fifth and the seventh month, these 70 years, if we're in the 70th year, the ninth of Av had to be observed according to their calendar. And the feast of trumpets must be observed according to their calendar. Well, guess what? The ninth of Av in the 70th year has now been observed according to their calendar. And so will the Feast of Trumpets. Because the answer is the sun or the moon has to be in its proper place of understanding just as we did with the sun. Oh, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I say take it with whatever grains of salt you want. I believe this is the final piece of the revelation and how fitting that, as I said, I wouldn't do any more. We will now be at 629. Lift up your heads for your redemption. Greek 629 draws nigh. It's only found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 28. Brothers and sisters, I believe this is the final piece, and it absolutely makes sense because it was the only piece that I had forgotten to include. So let's get into this. You see, remember this video in relation to Iran and Israel from four, oh my goodness, there it is again, 14 years ago? You have no idea. You would think, okay, well, 14 years, you talk about it all the time. You've known it for years and taught on the revelation of it. So, of course, you're going to see 14 years, you know, come up and you're going to be more aware of seeing it. However, I generally haven't. But in the last couple, three months, oh, my goodness, I have been seeing it pop up everywhere. People talking about it, their anniversary, something in a show, something here, something. It's everywhere. Well, this video is from 2010, and this video was given to me along with the confirming revelation from the Holy Ghost about 50 days and right on target. And what is what was this beginning piece in this? Iran and Israel in a short Middle East war before things settle, and then World War III comes. It is the revelation of the end of days. They have planned it, but they could not make it in their timing. It is going to be in the Lord God's timing. And the Lord God's timing, I don't have it brought up, but you guys remember in the Lord God's timing, in, in, the, in, the, in the Gospel of uh, Thomas, right, the Apocrypha book, it said, whoever finds the beginning finds the end. For in the beginning, there the end is, and whoever finds it will not taste of death. We have found it, brothers and sisters. We know we have found it. We've revealed it for a long time. But included in that beginning isn't only the sun. It's also the moon. It's also the moon. And when we taught on this, you'll remember. It's here to be understood in the book of Jubilees. I think it's chapter 25, page 25. Listen to what it says. Uh, and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the paths of years. You see, what do they say they're in right now? That it's going to be 5785. Which, by the way, somebody just did uh, had posted a video. I talked about it, I think, in the last one about the number 14 and how it relates to this year's Feast of Trumpets. But really, it'll be the true Feast of Trumpets, as you're going to see in a little while. But why wouldn't they be uh, um, 5986, right? With 14 years left to go. Well, they've gone off on their years. And what does it say? And we'll forget the new moon and the Sabbaths and the festivals and in all the order of the years they will err. Remember this word err? It's not found in Luke. It's talking about Mark and Matthew. So it's talking to the Gentiles, right? The Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel being Mark. And 
the Jews being Judah, which is for Matthew, both of those say that they will err. For I know, and from now, uh, sorry, for I know, and from now on, I shall make it known to thee, and not from my heart, but thus is written in a book before me, and is ordained in the tablets of heaven, the division of the days, that they forget not their festivals of my covenant. Listen to this. I, uh, and walk according to the festivals of the Gentiles. You see? So, like Mark. Mark's portion is completely in error, but so are the Jews, because they've forgotten these things. After the errors, and, uh, uh, sorry, after their errors and after their ignorance. Okay? The Jews are ignorant because they haven't been taught these things generation after generation being passed down. So the Jews are in error, and the world is in error. Matthew and Mark in error. And there will be those who will make observations of the moon. For this one, the moon corrupts the stated times and comes out each year early by 10 days. Well, what do we know in our time? It's not 10 days anymore. It's 11 days and a quarter. So it's 11 days and a quarter. Many of you who have been around for a while will remember this teaching. It'll start to dawn on you. And in this way, they will corrupt the years and will observe a wrong day as the day of testimony and a corrupted festival day and everyone will mix holy days with unclean ones and unclean ones with holy for they will err to the months as to months and sabbaths and festivals and jubilees it's right there it's right there for us to understand so let's have a look into this remember this isaiah 24 verse 23 then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the lord of hosts shall reign on mount zion and in jerusalem and before his ancients glorious gloriously why on earth would the sun and the moon be ashamed and confounded why didn't God create them? Weren't they all placed there and everything to be perfect? Because remember the teaching? The sun is a prophetic picture, a typology of Lucifer who fell. And the moon is the prophetic picture of the false prophet. So the beast or the antichrist and the false prophet who have fallen. We know that they have fallen and we know that the moon on lunar calendars is 11 to 12 days shorter than a solar year. This was the beginning of the revelation in December of 2012. And then it all started to open up for us. Watch what happens. Remember this in Genesis? In Genesis 14, uh, sorry, in Genesis 1, 14 through 17. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and so it was and god made two great lights the greater to rule the day and the lesser to rule the night and he made the stars also and god set them in the firmament Brothers and sisters, the stars have not gone off course. It's the, it's the picture of, of a, the face of a clock. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 have never moved. But the hour and minute hands have, haven't they? Oh, yes, they have. Why? Because the sun and the moon are no longer in the firmament. They have fallen. Remember Jude? Let's go to Jude. It has one chapter. And we'll remember this in June, in Jude. In verse 13, raging waves of the sea foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. What are wandering stars? Planets. The wandering stars are the planets that are now in what? 
darkness forever. Why? Because they had fallen from the firmament. They fell from the firmament just as the sun and the moon have fallen from the firmament. And what has happened since the sun has fallen off the, out of the firmament? Exactly the revelation we have been talking about since March of 2020. It is the revelation of Taurus that was the beginning of the year and the revelation that as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. Right? Whoever finds the beginning finds the end. And we have found the beginning. So that would mean, remember how we've said right here? This is the beginning of the first, the first uh, uh, of the count. That this begins the seventh Sabbath count. Do you know what that means? What, what did we discover here? That the sun in Taurus is in the place it was in the beginning. Because in the beginning, it started in Taurus. We showed the, the, the info on it. The Jews know this as well. The, the scientists know this as well, called the procession of the equinox. The sun, over thousands of years, has steadily been moving faster ahead. Why? Because it's no longer in the firmament. It's fallen. And we have the revelation of it, and it was the revelation of right on target that led us to Taurus, the Aldebaran star, the 14th brightest star in the sky that represents the number 50. Just like the Hebrew noon, 14th letter, which is the Hebrew letter, uh, Hebrew number 50. So does this change? Should this change? Is this maybe out of place? Nope. No, it isn't, brothers and sisters. It is not out of place. Because remember, we need to have the sun and the moon in its place in the firmament. And for that to happen, they must be in the right place when? In Taurus. In Taurus, they must both be accounted for being in the right place. I cannot emphasize that enough. Because in 2024, it is the only time in several years back and forward where the account is exactly accounted for in Taurus. Where not only as we know the sun is as it was in the beginning, but the moon is also at its proper starting place as it was in the beginning. Oh yeah, you heard that right. But remember what happens? The moon goes off by 11 to 12 days a year. Which means what? The following month, it's going to go off by about a day. And the following month, it's going to go off by about a day. And the following month, and the following month. Well, those have to be accounted for. Just as we were able to account them for, <coughs> excuse me, back in December of 2022. So the power of the revelation that I'm about to show that the moon is where it should be in Taurus at the time when the sun is where it should be so that they are both together as they were in the beginning in the firmament is perfect. There's a reason why Iran never attacked on the Hebrew calendar, 9th of Av. Because in the end, it will begin as it was in the beginning. The sun and the moon in a proper count of their place. Check this out. So this teaching here. The lamb. So how is it that he's supposed to be the lion of the tribe? Of this teaching here. I had had our sister Tammy. She's got that great uh, word search uh, with all of the teachings. And she can do the word search and find them. And I went through a couple of the videos that she sent me. And it was definitely in that area, and I spoke about them, but I was kind of filtering through them quickly, and I thought, no, there was something more accurate because what I was looking for was the actual breakdown, <coughs> excuse me, 
of getting to the understanding because I couldn't I couldn't recall it exactly how I had accounted for this count of the moon being off. Well, then I pull up this teaching and look at it. The honor of kings to search. What? For the kings and priests, brothers and sisters? And this is where I found it. Now, I don't know if I put it to the right spot in the video, but let's have a listen. I did, but I think it just reset. So let's have a quick listen, and you'll get, you'll get the piece in this anyways. Judah. We've talked on it before, but I'm going to bring more detail to it, and I will get around to it. Um, it's just other things come up along the way because I really want to be able to bring a lot more detail into it than what we've taught on in the past as well. So what did we come to see? Well, when the Spirit confirmed that Savan, or quote-unquote uh, Taurus, was the beginning of the year, that's where it all began. But we didn't yet believe that, that everything was to be understood as being two months off. I mean, let's face it, it sounded kind of crazy, right? We, we'd been trying to figure out for years <clears throat> that maybe everything was a month off. And the reason we would look at these things and then certain years we wouldn't think it was a month off was because the Jews added a second Adar. And a lot of people would say, oh, there's no such thing as a 13th month. Well, of course not, but now we know what the story is, right? They're trying to catch up on two years of three years, or two to three years of their calculations of the moon that have already passed. Exactly. So they're not adding anything. They're simply catching up to the moon. But when they do, we know that they're never on track. They're either a few days over on the moon count or they're a few days under on the moon count. And we've revealed these things, right? This one in this year that had happened earlier in the year, we know that it had to, that it was a three year difference this time. And in that three years, well, if every year the moon is off by about 11 and a quarter days, then they were off by over 33 days over three years. Well, they only add 29. So we know they were about three to four days short. That's the key right there, brothers and sisters. That's the key right there. So this was a later, <coughs> excuse me. This was a later teaching than the entirety of the revelation. You can see I discuss how it was already revealed and I'm explaining it here just briefly in this piece. Well, this was the one I was led to, and this was the piece I was looking for. Because you know what happens? You know what happens when you take that forward? Let me show you. Watch what happens. In 2024, before Nissan, they also added a second Adar. Okay? Which means they added... <clears throat> as they always do every two to three years to make up for what has already passed in falling behind for the moon, which proves their calendar is wrong in its timing. This is, I was saying before, I'm harping on it because it is so important to understand. <coughs> Excuse me. It is so important to understand. Okay, they've added 29 days in uh, April of, or in, in March to April of 2024. You saw from the 2022 count that the revelation at that point was that they were about three days too many, right? Or, or sorry, short. They were three to four days short <clears throat> because they were 33 days over. They only added 29. And when you do that count into 2024, they, because it was only two years this time, <clears throat> they were 26 days. There were 26 days that needed to be accounted for for the moon. But they add 29. They're not, they never add the exact amount. They always got to add a month of 29 days. So sometimes it's too many and sometimes it's too few. And they know it, which means what? Which means they err and they're aware of their error. It also means that the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th on a Hebrew calendar are not correct either. You see? 
So whether the Jews <clears throat> want to observe a Friday into Saturday Sabbath, or whether we were harping on it being the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th, they were both off anyways because of this fallen moon state. So they just decided to go with what? Exactly as it said. They just went to follow along with the Gentiles. And they put their Sabbath in a Friday to Saturday to be convenient with the world. I thought, yeah, 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th. <clears throat> Excuse me, that is correct. But it's not correct on a Hebrew calendar count. It's correct on the true placement of the moon. And that's what we didn't have yet this year, though we knew it in December 2022. So what did it mean when they added 29 this year? Well, they were three days short. I mean, sorry, sorry. They were three days too many. Because in this two-year difference from 2022 to 2024 and adding it a dar, the moon was off by 26 days. But they added 29. Which means what? Three days needed to still be made up for for the moon before it would be, remember, Savan, the sun would be in, is in its proper place two months off. We needed what? Three more months to account for the three days. Why three more months to account for three days? Because it's about one day off every month in the moon. Which means, you guessed it, Nissan, moon goes off by about one day. Ayar, moon goes off by about one day. Sivan, moon goes off by about one day, which makes what? Three days. How many days did we need to make up for, for them adding 29 when it was only 26? Three days. Which means... Nissan, Ayar, Sivan, which means <clears throat> at the understanding of the count where we were counting the two months off for Taurus in the beginning of the Feast of Weeks count, we were in the correct place for the sun, but we were also in the correct place for the moon, brothers and sisters. Because why? The three days we're now caught up because of it falling back. It accounted for the extra three days that had been added, which brings Savan back <clears throat> with the sun and the moon at the place they were in the firmament as it was in the beginning. But now guess what happens? Uh-oh. Now we have an issue. This was powerful. And just so you're aware, when, when I was realizing this last night, I thought they were gonna, they will have added too few and maybe it was gonna be two or three days short because I thought that's the, maybe the way the calculation needed to be to, to help us understand this correction of the 8th of Av and where it should really be. When I saw that it was three days short, uh, to, uh, uh, when they added three days too many, I started thinking, oh, maybe there isn't a connection here. But I followed it through. I followed it through to test and to see if it was correct. And when I saw that it was three days too many and then realized three months later, it would be as it was in the beginning and the sun and the moon were now together as they were in their correct place to begin creation, to begin in the firmament. Well, then I started to suddenly get excited because what happens after those three days are caught up and made up for? July, August. <clears throat> How many days? Has the moon fallen behind by the time we get to July, one more month, August, about one more month, 
means what? The 8th of Av isn't August 12th. The 8th of Av would appear to be August 14th. August 14th. You know, some people, when I posted this in the ministry last night, said, wouldn't that be fitting, right? It's the 14th. Remember I was just saying how 14 kept popping up? Not planned, not realized, just suddenly really, really intense the last couple months? Well, here it is again. And you know what's wild about it? August is called what? The eighth month. 814. Why 814? Well, if you remember, the, the, the first seven easy years are called about an eighth day. Remember days as years from Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 9? It's a prophetic picture of not only the Lord coming eight days later, right, after the seven-day wedding, but the eighth day. It's not only that. It's that the Lord, uh, um, it, it's that the, the days don't only represent the days in that picture of the Lord coming on the eighth day after the wedding, but it's also a prophetic picture of the seventh year of easy almost over. So we have about an eighth, and then you have what? Well, then the 14th. So about seven years, and uh, seven years, and then it's about the eighth, because what's the eighth? It's the beginning of the 14 years. So we've got eight and 14, which prayerfully, maybe, is also very telling for the revelation of this ministry. Because, brothers and sisters, nobody understands this revelation unless they've been following Ministry Revealed about the power of the understanding of the sun being off two months and why the Lord told in the Gospel of Thomas, whoever finds the beginning finds the end, for in the beginning there the end is. It was the revelation to understand the count of the Feast of Weeks. However, we didn't yet also include the revelation that we knew was so powerful about the moon. And here we are. I get prompted to look into it, trying to scratch my head. Lord, how is it possible they observed the ninth of Av? And then when I do it in Taurus, where it was in the beginning, as we've been teaching for, oh, well over a year now, but with a specific focus on this count for a year, we, we've got it, we've understood it, and now I'm reminded in the final moments, the revelation of the moon and in that count from 2022, when I went forward or backward, I could count the exact place where the moon, according to creation, in the firmament where it should be. And it equaled to be aligned in the month of Savan to be back on track. In 2024, that was so powerful. But then it also means it continues now its trek of falling off course by about a day every month. Which means the eighth of Av, according to as it was in the beginning, this is not the eighth of Av, regardless of where the, the moon is, regardless of where the crescent of the moon is, when it comes to the Feast of Trumpets. The reality is that is not going to be the Feast of Trumpets as it was in the beginning. So what happens when we now get to the 8th of Av in August 12th? It wasn't where the moon should be. It was off by two days. So we have to make up one, two days. Hello. I'm talking to you today from this day. <clears throat> being the eighth of Av, the true eighth of Av as it was in the beginning. Now, we still have a question in this. And that question is, does the Lord God go from evening to evening as the Jews claim still, though in everything they're in error? Or not in everything, in most of these things they're in error. Or, is it possible <clears throat> that the Lord God goes from sunrise to sunrise instead of sunset to sunset? 
That's the question that remains. Well, I think we can answer it. Because if this is to be understood, and this really is the date of the revelation, then to the Jews, this was the 8th of Av. Okay? This was the 9th of Av. This would be their 10th of Av. Do you understand why this is really powerful? There are many, many reasons. But it's because God didn't bring it about on the 9th of Av according to the Hebrew calendar because they're off. The attack would come then on the true 9th of Av according to the Lord God's beginning count and where the sun and moon ought to be. That's why they never attacked on the 9th of Av even with all that talk. And what will probably happen is the attack will happen on the true ninth of Av. So if the Jews are counting from evening to evening, and two days later, this would be evening to evening. Okay? Which means at sunrise in Jerusalem, oh, sorry, sorry, at sunset in Jerusalem on the 14th, then what would happen? It would be the Ninth of Av in a sunset to sunset. Well, guess what? If that's the case, well, then we should already be in the Ninth of Av. You follow? Because I'm from Mountain Standard Time in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and that would have been about 10, 30, 10 25, a little, about an hour and a half ago uh, in our time. And the bride is gone before the ninth of Av. So it would probably, most likely be that the Lord God is counting from sunrise to sunrise. Not evening to evening. Now, can I show this to some extent? Can we, can we show this picture? Well, let's have a look. Here's John 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, uh, sorry, early when it was yet dark. Remember who Mary Magdalene is a prophetic picture of? She is a prophetic picture of the bride of Christ. Remember that? 90, 93. It brings us to the word tower. This comes from Mary Magdalene's name represented from the Song of Solomon. And you remember her name? This Everybody knows the Song of Solomon. It's all about the, the, the bride, right? His fair bride, his beautiful bride, who is called what? His sister and his wife. You see? Because those who are in Christ. It's like me. My wife, you know, it sounds weird to the world out there. But to me and my wife, she's also my sister because she's in Christ. You see, my sister, my bride. Well, what do we know about this? Song of Solomon 8, verse 9. And she, uh, let's, uh, well, let's go here. Talking about the little sister first, right? Uh, if she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. This is really powerful because there's your picture of trumpets in relation to the 144 and the door is the millennial reign, which represents the tribes going out during the millennial reign through which all the doors, the gates, everybody will enter. Now listen to this in 8 verse 10. I am a wall and my breasts are like towers. You see, what is this word for towers? The tower, the bed of flowers. It is the word for Mary Magdalene. The bed of flowers. <clears throat> it's all the story in a prophetic type. And when I taught on this in the past, you guys will remember that now I understood why the church, I think the Catholic church, you know, there's that whole, was that whole Da Vinci Code thing, believing that Mary Magdalene was actually Jesus' wife. I do not believe that. 
I believe she is a prophetic picture of the bride, and it is revealed in her name. Well, when did it say she showed up? Remember what John chapter 20 is. Remember John chapter 20 wraps around. Remember we did the teaching uh, just maybe a couple months ago where John wraps around. We showed how it starts in John, it plays out, and it ends in John. John is a prophetic picture in chapter 20 of the beginning of the 50 days. Of the beginning of the 50 days. And when the Gospel of John is over in the revelation of the 20 years or the 13 years, which is 20, it is also what? The time of the Lord's again, right? It wraps around. It has a dual picture, and it begins with the start of the 50 days. Well, what does it say about the time when Mary Magdalene came? Early when it was yet dark. Remember this? He tells her, don't touch me, right? I haven't yet gone to my father. And then what happens? He ascends to the father. This right here, this prophetic picture right here, I believe is connected to the Lord when he comes and warns the disciples right before the moment of the pre-trip. Just as we've been talking about, that Luke 24 group, that Smyrna group, the remnant workers of Luke who will remain to serve the Lord as Smyrna. The Luke chapter 12, 35, uh, 35 be girded about when your Lord returns from the wedding. As, as, as uh, um, Revelation chapter 3, the end of the Laodicean age when he says to be ready when he returns and knocks exactly as he told them in Luke chapter 12. This to me is the prophetic picture of the Lord coming to warn the pre-trib bride, that remnant remaining bride, that Mary Magdalene, when she is told to go tell the disciples. And then what happens? He ascends to the Father. This ascending to the Father is the pre-trib. Well, when did Mary Magdalene show up there? Early when it was yet dark. That sounds to me like it's dark, right? It's, it's that early in the morning, first day of the week. Is it going from evening to day? Or is it going from sunrise to sunrise? Right? Is it going sunset to sunset? Or is it going e sunrise to sunrise? Well, early. What? On the first day of the week, early when it was yet dark. So just as it was the time of sunrise, it's still dark, but it's starting to come. Well, how can we say for sure? Or how can, how can we see this possibility of it being a sunrise to sunrise? Well, after he does all of this and talks with her and then ascends to the Father, Mary Magdalene goes and tells the disciples. And then look what happens in John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening. Then the same day at evening, he returns to them, shuts the door. This is for the apostles now when he's going to anoint the apostles. So if we're looking at this and the Jews are saying evening to evening and the Lord said she came on the first day of the week, okay? Which would mean, remember, this is the this would be the eighth of Av, which would make this the ninth of Av. We are waiting to the end of the true eighth of Av. You see, this is why I was so excited because I now understood that this difference of two days isn't just a whimsical difference of two days. It was prophetically revealed from twenty twenty two, or I should say, understood, not prophetically revealed, but understood in the revelation since December of 2022. It's not a, a made-up guessing the way this is moving or that's moving here to there. It, it's about the moon and understanding where the moon is supposed to be according to creation if it was still in the firmament like the sun. So this is the true eighth of Av 
And if that's the true eighth of Av, and it's going first day of the week, which would be the ninth of Av, remember the eighth, 15th, 22nd, 29th are the seventh Sabbaths. Well, this is the true seventh Sabbath in Av, right? Or sorry, this is the, yeah, the true seventh Sabbath of the Feast of Weeks. And we have to wait till it comes to an end. And according to what we just read in John, this is the first day of the week, very early while it's yet dark. Sunrise officially begins the day. If it's from day to day, from sunrise to sunrise, which means right here at the end of the true seventh Sabbath, what do we see? The Lord with that remnant bride with the disciples group. And then he what? Then he vanishes. The pre-trib would then take place right at that time frame, right as the time of sun, sunrise. And then what does it say? He returns the same day at evening. He's going to return the same day at evening. And when he does, he's going to anoint the apostles by blowing on them and anointing them with the Holy Ghost, just as we've taught, so that while the wedding is taking place, while the wedding is happening, they're going out and forgiving sin, right? Remitting sin or not remitting sin, according to the people and everything that they're doing during that week, being anointed with the Holy Ghost, more powerful than anybody has seen at any point ever in people. And what's happening? Israel gets attacked. So is Israel going to be attacked in Haifa and Tel Aviv first thing in the morning? Or might it be that when the Lord comes at evening, he's going to anoint these apostles, and then after he leaves in that evening, bang, in the evening time, Israel, as Isaiah 9, in Haifa and Tel Aviv, are attacked pretty fitting since they want them to come to a peace agreement right here, right? They aren't coming to a peace agreement. They're going to attack on the true ninth of Av according to the beginning of creation of where the moon should be with the sun as it was in the beginning. The Lord had them hold off unbeknownst to them unbeknownst to anybody because when they will attack it will have been the true ninth of off you following what happened then in john chapter 20 that followed after the lord breathes on them he leaves he's gone and then thomas comes in and he's like oh i'm not going to believe it unless i see him and i could i could you know, put my finger through him and so forth, right? And then look, what does it say? In John 20, verse 26, and after eight days again, hello, after eight days again, now he's coming back eight days later. And when he comes back eight days later, it's sometime on the eighth day. We don't know if it's the beginning, right? At sunrise, at sunset, it's sometime on the eighth day that he's coming. Well, that, is incredibly fitting for us because that is exactly the revelation we've shown in Luke chapter 9. <clears throat> in Luke chapter 9, remember this? Starting in 26, remember the, the teaching we just recently did of before the transfiguration and what it revealed in the what is written about in chapter 9 before the transfiguration of Luke compared to Mark chapter 9 and only one verse before the transfiguration and how in Matthew before the transfiguration <coughs> excuse me in chapter 17 there's nothing before it in chapter 17 it was holy spirit led revelation of what all of that meant being before the transfiguration in each of them in their chapter and look at what it says verse 27 but I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. This is another pre-trib escape 
of the bride that's being taken. That's why it then says, and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings. Why about an eight days? What was what I was telling you guys before? It's not only a relation to being about the eighth year, like it's the seventh year is almost over in the seven easy years, and the next set of seven, which is what? The eighth. The eighth is the is the same as saying the first of the next set of seven. So it's almost the eighth, but it's also about an eight days, which is a prophetic picture here of the Lord coming sometime on the eighth day. Why would it be coming sometime on the eighth day and not at the beginning of it? Well, because remember, he returned on the same day at evening. If it starts from day to day. And he was gone at this point to be with the father and took the bride, returns on the same day at evening, anoints them and then leaves for eight days or till one right from evening to evening. So he's now left. He anointed them in the evening, left in the evening. And he would return one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> he would return on the eighth day, sometime on the eighth day in the evening. Because there's a seven day wedding. And now, doesn't this date for the Jews look pretty fitting being in the midst of the week? Right? In the midst of the true week. Because now we've accounted not only for the sun, but also for the moon. Which would put us in the evening tonight. In where I am, it would be at about nine something this evening. Well, let me show you this. 9.04 a.m. Jerusalem time on Thursday is sunrise which means it could happen at some point earlier here before sunrise which would be what which would be when he would meet with his remnant bride portion who will remain to serve him and wait for his return when he knocks when he comes about an eight days later after the wedding. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? Nothing has changed with the exception of the revelation of where the moon is supposed to be. And the crazy thing is this is not new revelation. But the Spirit brought it back right on time. Right as many, I'm sure, were a little bit discouraged where I had people, oh my goodness, people beating on me. They Overall, it was pretty good, but there's been some beating on me for August 12th. There's a reason why I declared the 8th of Av with the understanding, as I did the Gospels in 14 years. Because I know it's going to be on the 8th of Av. When the 8th, sorry, when the 8th of Av ends, Right at the end of the seventh Sabbath. The only difference was this isn't the true eighth of Av. It's off by two days. And I didn't make this up. It's revealed in the understanding of the moon. It was prophesied to us in Jubilees. They know it by their own calendars having to catch up every two to three years. Do you understand? That is the revelation of understanding how much the moon is off is in the fact that they add a month every two to three years and that when they do it, it is never exactly 29 days. The evidence is in the fact that they do it. So now guess what happens? Guess what happens? A piece that had confounded me for a long time that was buried back in the wilderness as well now comes to light. And I believe you can be ready, watching, praying, diligently seeking the Lord 
and still guard your hearts so that you don't feel let down if this time doesn't come. You see, you don't have to allow yourself to be so excited that you allow yourself to be let down if the time comes and goes. But I personally believe this is the final piece to reincorporate in the revelation a mystery that we had already understood. And I believe what I'm going to show now will be the nail in the coffin that will prove this final piece. Remember Zechariah chapter 1, verse 12? How long will thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah against which you have had indignation these 70 years? 70 years goes all the way to what, guys? Feast of Trumpets. The 70 years will go all the way, well, not really the Feast of Trumpets, but the last day of the year, right? This, the true 29th of Elul is going to be the end of the true 70 years in the revelation of accession and non-accession, in the revelation of Leviticus chapter 19, 23 through 25. We have understood it. We have proven it. We know that we are in the 70th year. Well, the 70th year will end at the true 29th of Elul. Well, guess what? When we follow this in Zechariah, let me remind you first of the truth in the revelation of 70 years. How many years have we understood this for? Many, many years. 70 to 80 years. In those 70 to 80 years, which is 10 years, it's labor, which is pain, travail, toil, wickedness, sorrow, which means affliction, wickedness, trouble, vanity, unrighteousness, wickedness. It's 10 years of tribulation. Then, for it is soon cut off which is about six months. That's ten and a half years, which brings us to the we fly away. This has nothing to do with us. It is all about when they fly away on the wings of an eagle from Revelation chapter 12, 14. And when they do, it's for time and times and half a time, which is one plus two plus a half, which is three and a half years, for a total <clears throat> of 14 years. It is why we see everywhere in Scripture tell us 70 years is the revelation of understanding the end of days. And I don't know any other ministry that I'm aware of or anybody in the ministry has ever shared with us anywhere in any language that had continued the search of the revelation of 70 years besides us. And we received it. We know it begins the 14 years at the end of the true end of 70 years. But guess what Zechariah said? Guess, wh guess what Zechariah told us? This is where, for years, I had still scratched my head when it came to the revelation of what? When it came to the revelation of understanding that at the Feast of Trumpets, it's what? At the Feast of Trumpets, the 14 years have begun. And the 70 years have ended. The 14 years have begun. And the 70 years have ended at the Feast of Trumpets. How do we know this? Well, we know it from the revelation remember the revelation of mark chapter 13 in his discourse we know that it's six years of seals but what do we know about the lord's coming at the end of the six year of seals we see him at the end of the the sixth seal right before the end of the six year of seals he is seen coming with heavenly mount zion with paradise and what do we know from Mark 9, from the revelation of, from the revelation of um, uh, uh, before the transfiguration? That they will not taste of death 
till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Past tense. Because they will have seen it come at the end of the sixth year of seals. Just like it says at the end of the sixth year, uh, at the end of the sixth seal in Revelation chapter six. But their rapture of the great multitude of the mid trib doesn't happen yet. But they will have seen him come. Well, once he finally is there, it'll be what? After six days. What's after six days? After six years of seals, they see him come. And then after six years of seals, it's what? The day and hour no one knows. And the day and hour no one knows is the exact reason Mark's discourse tells us Luke's didn't have it because Luke's isn't at the day and hour. It's before. Mark tells us that it will be at the day and hour no one knows. Why? Because it will be at the true feast of trumpets. Why does Matthews say nothing before his transfiguration? That's because there won't be anything until the Lord is seen coming as lightning from one end unto the other, feet down on the Mount of Olives, on the day and hour no one knows, to end the sixth year of trumpets, which in the big picture will be the end of the 13th year of tribulation, and have one year remaining, which is going to be in Matthew's discourse as it was in the days of Noah, and you guys know that revelation. So what do we know? We know that the 14 years will begin at the true Feast of Trumpets. The six years will end and the seventh year will begin on the day and hour no one knows at the true Feast of Trumpets, which is the day and hour no one knows. And the end of 13 years, the end of the six years of tribul 13 years of tribulation, the 14th year will begin at the true Feast of Trumpets, day and hour no one knows. Well, let me show you something. This is the head scratcher in Zechariah that I've had on and off over the years, and especially since understanding that it goes from true feast of trumpets to true feast of trumpets. In Zechariah 7, verse 5, it says, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years. Did you at all fast unto me, even unto me? Guess what? No, they didn't, right? They fasted and mourned on mixed days and on unclean days. They were not the true days because they have erred. We know this. But it says that they did so for 70 years in the fifth and in the seventh month. We know that for the past true 70 years, and this year is the 70th year, that they fasted and mourned, or they would have to fast and mourn on the fifth and seventh month. We know it is in the wrong place. He even gives them this. By saying, did you at all fast unto me, even to me? Well, they did it on unclean days. They have erred going off because of the moon. So did they not err? Of course they did. He was in the prophetic writings of Jubilees. So he's asking them, so did you even do it unto me? Well, there's two pieces to this. Because it says that they did fast and they did mourn according to their times, even those 70 years. Which now is a head scratcher. Because <clears throat> if the 14 years, uh, sorry, if the tribulation, if the pre-trib was to begin and the attack begin in an evening to evening on their ninth of Av, guess what? In the 70th year, <clears throat> excuse me, which we're in, they wouldn't have been able to observe the fasting in the morning of the fifth month in the 70th year. Hello? Did you catch that? We are in the 70th year. It said that they fasted and mourned, well, us now knowing 
that it wasn't properly unto him because it was in the wrong time, <clears throat> but that they did it for 70 years. And if this is the true 70th year, which it is in the Revelation, then they must have had to observe their fasting and mourning in the fifth month on their ninth of Av in the 70th year. Which means what? Which means the attack couldn't have come at this, the beginning of 50 days. Because they hadn't yet observed the fasting in the morning of the fifth month in the 70th year. Guess what? Have they done so now? You betcha. You bet they have. But now what does that tell us about the one in the seventh month? You see? When do the Jews observe the fasting and the mourning of the seventh month? It's the fast of Gedalia. Listen to what it says. To lament the assassination of Gedalia, which left Judah devoid of any Jews or Jewish rule and completed the destruction of the first temple, the Jewish sh sages, remember, to complete the destruction of the first temple? Remember the first attack will be in northern Israel? In Isaiah 9, then you've got the Son of Man here for 40 days, and then Syria with the Palestinians, then destroy Jerusalem, it completes the job and it begins the 14 years at true Feast of Trumpets. And you're going to understand why this is so powerful. The Jewish sages established the third day of Tishri as the fast of Gedalia, although Gedalia's assassination, perhaps it was believed, right, to have happened on the first of Tishri. It did happen on the first of Tishri. It happened at the true Feast of Trumpets. Okay? It happened on the true Feast of Trumpets, okay? Or on their first of Tishri. We'll, we'll say on their first of Tishri. But what do the Jews do? Well, they don't want it to be coinciding with Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, which is the day and hour no one knows, which means it's over one or two days. So when did they do it? They actually observed the fasting in the morning of the seventh month on the third day. Hello. So, in the old understanding, I could have said, well, they did observe it in the 70th year. Because, you see, this Feast of Trumpets in 2023, not 2024, but in 2023, this Feast of Trumpets, or their Feast of Trumpets, began the 70 years, right? So, they did observe the fasting and mourning of Gedalia of the seventh month in the 70th year. But what it didn't account for was how they would do the fasting in the morning of the fifth month, ninth of Av. Well, when you understand, as we now do, that by August the moon is off its course by two months and has to be made up for, the ninth of Av is really the 15th of August or the 11th of Av because of the air. Well, watch what happens in the seventh month. Because if this is about two days, right? There's about two days at this point. There's three by about midish month, right? Well, what about when we get to beginning of the month? It's about three, three and a half days, right? say three and a half, three and a half to four days, I don't think it would be a complete four days till later in the month, right? In about four days. So it's about three and a half approximate days at this point when we get here because it's 11 to 12 days per year. Remember that. Everybody's aware of it. We know it. They know it. They, they account for it by adding a month every two to three years. And when they do, it's too much or too little, and more has to be accounted for, or more falls behind as the months continue on in the year. 
which means what? Is this true Feast of Trumpets according to the Lord God in the beginning? Nope. Nope. You see, the 4th of October, the second day of trumpets, is when the 3% of the crescent of the moon will be seen. So this is where the Jews would actually declare it. But is that where the moon ought to be? No, because it fell. According to the Lord God in the beginning, we now have to make up about three to four days. So you would have what? They would say it's right here. So there would be one, two, three. So somewhere in here on the fifth to sixth would be the Lord God's beginning of creation where the moon ought to be according to the revelation precisely as it was revealed and i could show it for any year in any month and as i keep pounding into your minds the jews know because that extra month is to make up for the moon's going off which means all throughout those two to three years before they do it it is off further and further and further. Hello. This right here is the Lord God's true feast of trumpets as it was in the beginning. Well, do you know what that means? That would mean this is still the 70th year. And guess what? In the 70th year, they will observe the fasting and the mourning of the seventh month before the true Lord God in the beginning feast of trumpets where the moon should actually be with the sun. Does this date look familiar to anybody? This was or will be the one year anniversary of from the first attack on Israel and Jerusalem. Hello. This head scratcher that had bothered me of how they can observe it, knowing there's 50 days left in the year, and those 50 days are to represent when the first attack comes, but they were to observe it in the 70 years it just didn't make sense how they would observe it. Now it does. Because the fifth and the seventh month will be observed in the true 70th year. And the true Feast of Trumpets in the sixth to the seventh of Tishri on the Hebrew, uh, uh, sorry, of October, on the fourth to the fifth of Tishri, somewhere in there, will be the Lord God's true beginning of 14 years. I told you it was going to answer questions that I had had and it scratched my head over for a long time. I believe this is the revelation, brothers and sisters. You understand? We have revealed the count by continuously, diligently seeking and searching the Lord in the revelation of 70 years. When we did, we got the revelation of accession and non-accession. When we did, we got the revelation of Leviticus chapter 19, 23 through 25 to be included with accession and non-accession. We received one physical confirmation from the Holy Ghost of being right on target that revealed Taurus and the eye of Taurus called Aldebaran called the bullseye being like noon the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet that equals the number 50 and that Aldebaran star being the bullseye being right on target representing the 14th brightest star in the sky which is one of the four corner stars by the way and it's to represent uh, it's believed to represent the fourth corner star, which is the rolled scroll for prophecy. Hello. Hello. 
It was the final star of the four corners to be revealed. That's pretty wild. We understood the count from the birth of Christ revealed, you know, back in 2022, I was still going back and forth between whether it was uh, um, uh, um, third month, 15th to the 16th day, or whether it was Hanukkah. John and Jesus were always still interchanging at that point. And in December of 20, even October, November, December of 2022, I was focused on it being Hanukkah for Christ. But we discovered in 2023 that it was, in fact, Jesus being born just like Judah and, and so many others. Isaac, he was born on the third month, 15th day. And we could prove it now based on the revelation of the sun, moon, and stars. And it was confirmed. We now knew it. And then we had the revelation from Isaiah 9. And we then knew from Matthew chapter 4 that the Lord would come about two months later from his birth when he fulfilled it the first time <clears throat> after the light affliction in those two cities and that it would be connected to the, uh, um, the circuit of the sun, which we also know is two months off. Hello? We've understood these things. When we understood the count from Christ and understood that in a Gregorian calendar count, <coughs> we couldn't have a year zero because we operate and all of history is gone back recorded in a Gregorian count. And when we did it, we got the revelation from Luke chapter 3 into 4, the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar which was 28 to 29 A.D. So when Jesus in Luke chapter 9 declared the Jubilee in the words that he spoke as Isaiah 61, we began 29 A.D. in a Jubilee year and counted the Sabbath year counts from that time forward. And when we did, from the time of Christ, began the Jubilee count based on when Jesus spoke the words in Luke chapter 4, we began a jubilee count. And when we did, we counted the seven Sabbaths with jubilees all the way, all the way to our seasons and times. And 2038 is the final jubilee, which was precisely the end of the 14 years based on scripture we understood and had the revelation of the wheat harvest that there was a winter wheat and a spring wheat and that within it the old being winter wheat is first before the spring wheat we know when it was harvested how the harvest had to begin its count in savan when the sickle is put to the wheat. And that when we did it, we got to the eighth of Av. The only piece that was finally needed was the missing piece to bring us to the true eighth of Av, which was the missing piece of the moon that brought us back into the revelation of everything else we revealed that was shown to us in the revelation from the creation. And that was that not only was the sun in the firmament and to be in its place where it should have been being two months off, but so had the moon to be also. Brothers and sisters, I'm excited. I believe with all my heart we are absolutely here. And what is going on with Iran in Israel, as I've been saying in the forum and in the post, it is not going back in the bottle. It is coming. And we, the pre-trib bride of Christ, being taken to the third heaven, the pre-trib bride, going 
above 14 years being taken like a rapture to the third heaven will not see the attack of Iran in Haifa and Tel Aviv. They will be pre-tribbed out of here first. The only ones of the group remaining are the ones who will see it. The ones who have been instructed by the Lord, the angel of the Lord, however that works, however much in advance that happens. They will be the ones to hear and witness the attack by Iran and its proxies upon the attack of Haifa and Tel Aviv that will officially begin the 14 years, whether it's early in the morning or more likely in the evening after the Lord has anointed the new modern-day apostles and leaves, the attack will begin on the evening of the true ninth of Av in a sunrise to sunrise revelation. I believe, me, myself, I believe in the revelation and I believe we are here. You can take it for whatever you would like to take it for. Just so long as you are ready in Christ Jesus. Those who are in Christ, spirit-filled, watching and praying, diligently seeking to be as Enoch was, to have never tasted of death, having had faith and believing that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Brothers and sisters, this is it. This is the last teaching and the end of the road, but we will see you very, very soon, either prayerfully in the lowest room of the third heaven, watching and praying, having been accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man or to be girded about, ready when he returns from the wedding that when he knocks either on the temple of our spirit of our flesh or literally comes in some form to us individually knocking on the door we will be ready when he returns for that banquet meal with us ready to serve him in his will and in his glory amen amen and amen <laughs>